Listeners, prepare thyself, for you are about to witness two fine gentlemen muse upon the fandom realm, for you have ventured upon the kingdom of Graf. Hosted by Marco Guerrero and Michael Berkowitz. Hello, Hello. everybody. I'm Marco Guerrero. I'm Michael Berkowitz. And I'm Kendall. And can, sorry, because I forgot I wasn't prepared for you to be here. I'm so used to saying I'm Kendall on the channel. <laughs> so that's all I know how to do. All right, Maddie, it's now your turn to, to introduce yourself. And I am Maddie Carteropel, and this is my cat, Hunter. Hey, Hunter. <laughs> Goatee. I like the green eyes. Is a and it's a tuxedo cat, correct? The tuxedo cat, yeah. He's always dressed to uh, for a night out, but he has COVID right now, so he's staying in. <laughs> right. We need to start selling cat masks. If you have one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They just had that on. Uh, they just had that on Shark Tank. Somebody came on Shark Tank with a dog mask for COVID. Really. Yeah, well, they they marketed it more for like people living in California for like the wildfires and the air quality in California sometimes. Yeah. But then they were like, and it can be a protection for COVID for your dog. <laughs> did they invest or no? Uh, didn't some? I think somebody did. Yeah, I think yeah, so. I think one of Damon them did. Or something. Yeah, I think Damon invested in it, which he's like the pet co dude. Whoa. So. Cool. What's crazy is uh, I saw like a, a clip from like two years ago where somebody had gone on and was selling the idea of surgical masks that had custom printed graphics on them, and they got laughed out of the show. It's like, <laughs> who would do this? Who would wear that? And they go, Damon, would this ever be fashionable? He's like, no. <laughs> Because, you know, in Japan, you know, you got nurses, they like their custom scrubs and hats and masks and stuff. So they were marketing it towards that. But it was just funny how that, that clip did not age well. No. Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, I named my cat. Uh, his name is Hunter, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. But uh, he was a kitten and he loved to. I got him like a little cat toy. And uh, he started growling, and I was like, oh, I should call him Hunter. So that's how he got his name. <laughs> and I, I, I had a – I told you all this info in the, pre, the pre-show, the pre but I'm just repeating it for, for the audience. But, yeah, I had a cat when I was a kid. That was a tuxedo cat as well. And uh, I, I gave him different names. Um, mm. I don't know why, but I did. I named him uh, Cow. Uh, what else? Riley. And I called uh, called him. Uh, what else did I call him? Oh yeah, Peanut because of jury duty. Uh, Polly Shore had a little dog named Peanut. I was like, oh, that's a cute name. But Hunter, he just has one name. I haven't given him another name. <laughs> well, that's good. You don't have nicknames, like pet nicknames. Um. Maybe like Hunty. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't really, yeah, you can just call him Hunter. We do have a dog, though, and he's a Pomeranian, and he has like 10 nicknames. <laughs> His name's Azun, Lord Azun. I guess he's named after a D&D character. We adopted him. Oh, and, my God. Uh, but yeah, we call him, my wife has like 10 different nicknames, like, Bug or Boof or Schnoobles. Yeah, or just like all kinds of just made up names. What about you all? Do you have a dog and have made up names? We have we have one dog and Kendall has three cats that are our uh, subscribers on our YouTube channel are very familiar with the cats because they tend to try to steal the show because um, we unbox things and you, if you open a box, it's for a cat. Clearly, oh, uh, that's yeah. cool. All, all boxes are for cats. But yeah, we have a uh, a black cat that she named Shaniqua. We, we won't go into that. It's also black. A, they were different times. A black transgender cat. Yeah, um, she doesn't like to talk about it. <laughs> and then an orange cat named Leo and a Persian 
named Xerxes, clearly for the Persian king, Xerxes. He has an Instagram. <laughs> He's really cute. Like, after so DiCaprio, cute it hurts. Leo DiCaprio or... Um, Which, oh, oh Le for Leonardo? Or is it Leonardo da Vinci? I was just wondering it, who it's named after. No, Leopold. She wanted an orange what she wants she ha happens <laughs> okay cool that's cool yeah i don't have any pets I, my oh, pet history is very traumatic and it's left me scarred oh no what <laughs> happened uh well i had a dog when i was about five named snuggles after the fabric softener of course oh yeah snuggles. and my sister after a week of having it you know it got taken away because my sister was allergic and oh man a few years later i had we, we had a bigger house a little bit more space we got a, a couple outdoor dogs and then they just died pretty quick so oh no i just never been able to get attached to them from like i, I refuse to you know i have intimacy issues i guess it's like okay i don't know okay. well mario that guy mario is kind of like a pet right there he doesn't really Thing, though. He's not going anywhere. I've been telling Marco he needs to get Mario a face mask just for fun, but he hasn't done it yet. Oh, yeah, you got to. So you said <laughs> you, the, the dog, one of the names was a D&D. &D. Do you play D&D? &D? Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I want to learn, though. It's a lot of fun. It's, uh, it seems uh, really fun. It seems really fun. No, we adopted the dog, and uh, it came with that name, so... I will prepare you though. Everybody who starts to play, if you play with like new people, uh -huh. everybody straight up gets evil. You know, I was talking <laughs> with, I did a signing, you know, I won't say with who, but they were talking about how they play D and D and they play with their neighbors. And, you know, I play with my nephews and his friends. I run a game for them. Mm -hmm. And they always end up like every time their answer is just to kill people. <laughs> like you meet up, like, <laughs> it's, like you beat up somebody does something, let's kill them. You know, let's hide the body. Let's steal. Like, out of, like their first reaction is just to kill everybody in the game. And they're like the nicest people in the world. You know what I mean? So there's no hugging in in D and D or anything. I mean, there could be if you played if you played your character that way. But I guess it's just because people, you know, get to play to do whatever they want, and so it's like an outlet, you know, to like I don't know, be evil. <laughs> it's their ability to have this imagination purge event of their own. So, like, with my nephew, for example, they were on their way back to town, and uh, I had them, I wanted something to happen on the way to town, and so I had them roll, and they noticed these wolves by a bridge, and then as they close, got closer, they realized it was a bunch of kids wearing wolf's hide, like, caps and stuff, and one of the kids jumps out in front of the middle of the road and says, you cannot cross without paying a toll, and my nephew, who's, like, nine, is like, I kill him. Or I, I stab him. And I'm like, Gee. okay, roll. And he like rolled really high. I'm like, he's on the floor bleeding out. Everybody's on the floor like, why are you stabbing him? Why did you kill him? He just wanted... And then like the rest of the party's like, heal him, heal him, help him. He's like, well, he wanted money. He wanted like... But we only wanted a couple silver. Oh, silver? I thought you wanted our gold. I would have just given you the silver. <laughs> Whoa. That's cool. But yeah, it's just, it always leads to, to these, you know, type of things. But it's fun because anything can happen. Yeah. Um, one thing. It's cool to play D&D, &D, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not cool to stab children over yeah. silver. <laughs> That's not... Just to be clear, everybody. Yeah, just to be clear. D&D is cool. Stabbing children wearing wolf hide is not cool. Very un. Probably any children. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you don't even make that. How about like going through like the no. history of children that I met when I was younger? Okay, is it cool to stab them or them? Or them? <laughs> <Jeez>. yeah. oh. <laughs> uh, one thing that I know you're really into though is pizza. You did like a podcast or a show or something reviewing pizza for a while. Uh, or was it just for fun? Just you? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have a podcast about pizza. No, I just uh, I just love pizza. Um, I have a couple, like, I have, like, a TV script that I wrote, uh, that involves a character that eats a lot of pizza, and a couple other shows that I'm pitching that involve pizza, so, 
And I used to go to like my first premiere that I went to was Jurassic World. Uh, no, no, my first premiere was Dumb Dumber Two. Sorry, but Jurassic World, I I had a slice of pizza on the red carpet, and uh, <laughs> that was very funny. And uh, I think I think the executive producers were looking at me like, "What is wrong with this guy?" <laughs> <laughs> red carpet. I just thought it was so weird and different and funny, and uh, just because I don't know, they just people take red carpet so seriously. It's just like it's supposed to be fun. Like, like I don't know. Like none of the guys are like smiling, or I just feel like I don't know. Do you? Do y'all sound like smart? It? Yeah. I got to ride, uh, walk the red carpet once at, for the People's Choice Awards. And the girl I was with, we were walking, and uh, Kaylee Koku was the host that that year. And she had this giant train for her dress. And we were behind, walking just behind her, and she kept, my friend kept stepping on the train by accident, just because <laughs> it was just so long and, yeah. and stuff. But yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. We just, we, I wanted like a charity auction thing to go to, you know, to do it, walk the red carpet and do the whole thing. And it was a lot of fun. I remember on the red carpet, I'm bringing a snack for sure. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be pizza, but you don't know how long you're going to be there. Yeah, exactly. You need to, you know, blood sugar gets low. Things get foggy. You get dizzy. You need, you need slice with you. At all times. I've been to, I've been to two, two premieres. Uh, I, so I grew up in Southern California, and I won tickets on the radio. One of them was to Independence Day, and the other one was to Mars Attacks. And I'll always remember what what you're saying is so true. So, like, a lot of the people from Independence Day kind of just, like, were very serious, walking the red carpet, giving their interviews. And I'll never forget Will Smith, like, put his hand to the interviewer's camera and kind of push it away and jumped into the stands with the fans and started hanging out with them. And he was just like, kind of like, this isn't about being serious in interviews. This is about we're celebrating this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. He seems like a cool dude. I want to work with him. Will Smith. That's yeah, cool. it was a pretty cool I'm moment. Now. Well, if you were to cast him in something that you were working on, what what would his role be in it? Oh, uh, his role? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it would be like a... Um, detective movie or something with me and him <laughs> where we're both detectives together like lethal weapon or something <laughs> i hear they're investigating making... uh pizza place murders yes <laughs> um, the, uh, cool. the i hear that they just signed up uh and just finishing up the the pre-production for lethal weapon five Really? Yeah, I just read this like last last week. Wasn't it a TV show or something too? Yeah, yeah, they did a TV show spinoff. And then oh. the type thing. The then the Murtaugh character went like crazy on set and became like a prima donna, and they basically fired him from the show, replaced him with Sean Scott. Whoa! Why'd they fire him? Well, basically, because he just like went all crazy and like. Uh, he like hit him and um, Damon Wayans uh, Jr. Just kept. What was Damon Wayans? Jr. What was it, Damon Wayans Jr.? I think it is Damon Wayans or one of the Wayans. Yeah, the, he kept directing the episodes, and then like he kept taking everything overboard and too serious, and was violent and would show up drunk, and like there was this whole big drama around the character. So they finally just fired him at the end of the second season. Well, they didn't fire him; they killed him, but. <laughs> 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 and then they had Sean, uh, like, Sean William Scott, the guy from Dude, yeah. Where's My Car? Is it Sean William Scott or Sean Scott? Yeah, Sean, I think it's Sean William Scott. He actually came in and did a really good job, but they just ended up canceling the show, I think, like after eight episodes. Uh, but yeah. it was actually, it wasn't bad. Um, yeah, it was right. a lot of drum on that set. But, uh, so I got I to gotta rewind and talk pizza for a second because, like, we we talked before before we went live. We talked about how passionate we are about pizza, and there's oh. something I always, I always say because so we live we live in Southern Oregon, and there's tons of pizza places around, 
but I always say there's not like your standard New York football pizza, and that bugs the heck out of me. So is that what is your like? Do you like that like artsy kind of place that has their own take on pizza, or are you like a traditional? Um, I'm both. Like it, it just depends on what pizza mood I'm in, I guess. Um, yeah, I love both. Uh, uh, you know, I really like, uh, like, um, I love the, the typical New York slice or, um, you know, I, I really love, uh, wood, wood fired pizzas. Very good. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I guess that's called, it's called, uh, Nepali pizza from Nepali. Uh, I really like that kind of, kind of pizza. Have you been to pizza rock? Pizza Rock. No, where's that? There's one. Uh, there's one in Sacramento. It's by this. Oh God, he's like this super famous Italian chef, um, and he's like known for pizza. And his his uh, Marguerite pizza has won like the gold medal award in Italy. Uh, they they only make like ninety seven of them a day because the dough takes like three days to make. Oh whoa! Yeah, it's pretty good. I have a pizza suggestion. Oh God! Okay. And it's it's true, like it's real. Michael knows. <laughs> Genuinely, if you like pizza, just try getting a cheese pizza and putting hot tamales on it. And Ooh. the great thing about it is the candy, like on the outside of the hot tamale, like melts into the cheese, so it's like sweet pizza. And then the hot tamales aren't really spicy anymore; they're just chewy. <laughs> It's good. really, really good. That sounds good. So yeah, I recommend. But like milk duds and popcorn, you wouldn't yeah. be good, and they're it's delicious. Yeah. Well, have you done? Have milk? I done milk duds and popcorn? Yeah. I don't think so. I've done hot tamales and popcorn, <laughs> but I don't really like popcorn. So. Well, popcorn like, and uh, junior mints is good. Cereal. Oh, that's a, that's mm. another one. But. That's a good uh, one. My favorite pizza is in Oregon. I, I've lived in Manhattan. I've, you know, I've lived, you know, I've been to Chicago several times, had all the Chicago pizza. Oregon pizza yeah. is still by far my favorite. Uh, there's, there's a place near you guys called Abby's, and I love it. They have this one pizza called a linguica, and it's a Brazilian sausage, but they shave it and put it all over the pizza, and then you get that with, like, pineapple. Are you a pineapple on pizza or no pineapple on pizza? Uh-huh. Yeah. Cold, wet things on pizza. I just can't. It's just weird. See, so I'm not. I'm not. See, I'm not. when you say cold, wet, so to me, the best pizzas, like you get a pep, nice warm pepperoni, right? Uh, pizza with nice uh, Colby Jack cheese. And you get the little roll up pepperonis that roll up with a little bit of oil, get stuck in the bottom of them. Yeah. And then you put cold pineapple and sliced tomatoes with a little bit of salt. But like the nice, I would thicker. try it. Like I would definitely try it. Maybe I'd love it. Um, there is a pizza place in Philadelphia that I've read about that they put ice cream on their pizza. It's called the Pizza Museum, and it's mm. the only pizza museum in the U.S. And uh, they put ice cream. And then there's another place in uh, in Las Vegas called Evil Pie. And they have a grasshopper pizza, which is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I was gonna say, hmm. Try the protein of the future. Grasshopper yeah. or pineapple? Um, I think grasshopper I'm go with and the pineapple. crickets. Uh, speaking <laughs> of Sacramento, there was a, this is the first time I, I placed. There's this pizza place. Uh, it's kind of like a subway, where you go in and you pick your sauce. You pick. Your, they put it on your dough. They pick your cheese, and then you pick your toppings, and then throw it in the wood eye or the the stove, right? And yeah. they they charge you like twelve bucks for like this about fourteen inch pizza. And it's like a personalized pizza. And oh yeah, I've been to places like that. Yeah, and, that's cool. And they're really good. Um, yeah. But uh, we do have a comment uh, from Zach Height. Uh, he just watched Wheels of Fortune last night. And it was so funny. And uh, I uh, I too just watched it last night and prep for this. Uh, did they? Cool. Where did you? Did they actually travel a lot, or was that pretty much all just here in Southern California? 
Uh, that was in Northern California, actually. We found that in Pataluma. Um, Pataluma, uh, California, right by San Francisco. And it was really fun. I was up there for a month. And, uh, it was like a third, yeah, it was like a 30 day shoot. And, uh, have you all been up there? It's really beautiful. Yeah. So actually we, uh, um, we used to live in Redding, California, which is okay. kind of like uh, hell on earth. But <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, but we've been uh, around all of Northern California. We've both been basically in California our whole lives, and then moved to Oregon in 2013. But all over California, nice. I've driven through there. I haven't like stopped very much, but uh, but the movie itself. Um, I mean, if you want to tell us a little bit about it, you're probably um, better than I would. Yeah, yeah, it. definitely. It's a, uh, it's a comedy, obviously. Um, <laughs> it's uh, Matt, me and Matt Jones and Noreen DeWolf, and uh, it's uh, Christine Moore, uh, John Ducey, and it's just a really funny uh, comedy about these two idiots that try to uh win this fortune by going on all these different races like you know all, all different kinds of you know races with cars boats um motorcycles it's cool monster and trucks a little bit like dumb and dumber monster trucks yeah, <laughs> yeah a bit like dumb and dumber um and john ducey wrote it as well john ducey wrote it yep yeah. Yeah, it's a really funny, fun comedy with lots of laughs. If you like, had, then you should watch it. Yeah, it had, uh, I think, uh, the Lucas Oil guy the was a cameo in it. Yeah. And, like, all the producers had were, had roles. This filled out, like, yeah. the rest of the uh, the thing. It was it was fun. I enjoyed it. Sure. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a blast. It was a really fun time. Now, are you uh, going to be back for this season of Stranger Things in any way, or? Oh, I can't say. You can't say. So that means <laughs> yes. The Hawkins oh. van will come after me and take me down. <laughs> It'll take me out. So, yeah, guys, he's not going to be in it. <laughs> Big air quotes. But, uh. Can't say anything. But I, I am some... working for other projects at the moment, which is fun. I'm pitching my own TV shows and movies and uh, a couple other. I'm, I'm doing an animation show right now, a couple animations nice. right now. And, uh, yeah, some big things coming in uh, 2021. Sweet. Well, I know, uh, I, I, know uh, I don't think you can talk about it either, but there was like a horror-themed one. Or can you talk about that one? Uh, which one? There was like a, you were going to be working in like a horror movie or something or no? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know uh, a horror movie. No, I don't know where you. Maybe not. I don't know where you got that info. Uh, you know the internet; it's always got some things. Hey Siri, not disturb him doing a podcast. Jeez. <laughs> Do not just flip this off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So you're writing your own stuff. What kind of like? What would you say your style is like? What what is it you're kind of going for? Like when you were talking about the the Will Smith uh, detective, I was trying to come up with oh. like nice pepperoni puns. Like you've been, I don't know. I, that's what I was trying to find up like pepperoni pins that detectives would say when you arrest somebody. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> uh, that's really funny. Um, no, I'm I'm uh, I, I, I'm. Uh, writing a feature film right now called You're Not My Real Dad. And it's about this guy that works at a pet store. And uh, his mom marries uh, his high school bully um, from high school. And they're the same age. So it's like a comedy about these two guys. Uh, it's going to be funny. It's going to be good. It reminds me of this TikTok that's going around. About uh, about the guy whose mom says, "Hey, come to dinner. I want you to meet my new boyfriend." And then the boyfriend comes knocking the door. And goes, "What's up? 
World Star 2022. And he like, kid looks up and goes, wait, how do you know that name? I haven't used that name in like 10 years. Well, remember when we were playing Call of Duty and I'd say, I, I'd screw your mom? <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> or something. That was just some, something along those lines. Like, it That's took him 10 really years, nice. but he finally caught up with the kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> dedication so i got in the uh one of the facebook posts i got martin and he has some kind of fun uh, uh, uh oddball question for you first of all he wants to know i know we've been talking about pizza he wants to know your favorite sandwich oh that's a good question uh my favorite sandwich is uh like a turkey club i love a okay. good turkey club sandwich I'm right there with you, man. My, yeah, that's my go-to turkey club. I've always been a fan of like roast beef and like a good sharp cheddar. Yeah, I worked in my kind of tuna melt. I like it. That's tuna. her. She. That's right up her alley. Tuna melt is right up her alley. Yeah, tuna melt is very I, good. I worked at a subway for like a minute when I was 15, and I used to try to make all these different weird types of sandwiches <laughs> and stuff. It was, it was a lot of fun. What was like the weirdest non Hollywood job you've had? Uh, yeah, I, my first job was a sandwich maker as well. Um, actually, it was my second job. My first job was Dunkin' Donuts. I worked the drive through. Um, that sounds great. And I want to correct you with the sandwich maker. It's called Sandwich Artist. Yeah. <laughs> I was a sandwich artiste for sure. <laughs> artiste. But yeah, I love that job. I was. I was such a, I would goof around. I would like run around with, uh, I pretend that baguettes were my arms and like ring people up <laughs> and just like ridiculous stuff. Um, I, also, I also worked at a grocery store, um, but I got fired because um, I would just, I, I was just such an idiot at those jobs. I was just, it was basically a time for me to have fun. Like I would, I would like, you know, the, the bosses of, it was called Shaw's Supermarket. And uh, the bosses would come and the manager would be like, all right, everyone behave. No one do anything today. And, you know, everyone be on their best behavior. Just, you know, just act cool. And, and I did not. Like, I just like, <laughs> I ran around without my shoes on. And I kept asking people, have you seen my shoes? <laughs> Just such an idiot. And I would like, I I poured flour all over my chest and was like, oh, uh, uh, this place has great drugs or something. <laughs> <laughs> I would like cage myself into the back room and be like, then I'd go back there and be like, what? What do you guys want? I'm working. <laughs> Yeah, it's, those are funny. But uh, that uh, human human reaction is one of my favorite forms of comedy. I think seeing the reactions that you can get, genuine reactions you can get out of people, and just the awkward situations you can put people in yeah. are some of the funniest things. Yeah, like Tom Green, uh, his comedy is, is like that. His comedy was like that. Yeah. The do you ever mess with uh, I know like in New York you have the UCB and they also have a UCB in uh, LA but like the Groundlings Second City do you do any kind of like comedy troupe stuff? Yeah, I've done um, I've done improv at UCB quite a bit. Uh, I love it there. I, I've taken a lot of UCB classes. Yeah, I love that scene and I've, I I uh, I had a bunch of sketch shows a few years ago that I would do with friends. And it's really just a great way to connect with those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I took yeah. some uh, UCB classes in Manhattan. Uh, Anthony Amarak, who was on 30 Rock, and he uh, did the Donald Trump impressions, you know, with the, the Donald Trump um, uh, show on Comedy Central and stuff like that. And then I did some sketch writing just for fun. Like, none of, nothing was serious. This was just for the experience of doing it for fun and messing uh, around. And it was a lot of fun. Nice. 
That's cool. Do you, do you do acting at all now, Marco? Or oh no, I, I my problem is is I can't like I'm better at uh, improv because I can just react kind of like on this show, but like if you gave me a script and said uh, read this and act this out, I would be like the turkey was yellow because it was green. <laughs> Wait, that wasn't the line, was it? No, okay. The green turkey was purple. Wait, no, yellow or purple? What was it? You know, like. Like I, yeah. I can't, I can't do that. Like it's, I turn into this weird thing. But like, if I'm doing improv, you know, then I can just be and just kind of make it up as I go along. And that's why I enjoyed improv. You know, um, that's funny that you bring up turkey too, because it's like still on your mind. Well, somebody had posted here. Uh, Marty put yes, turkey. Yeah, and so people I was got really excited the, about the turkey answer. And so I was just seeing that, and you know. But, you know, so, you know, there's, like, I like sketch writing. I like writing uh, stuff that's, like, 30 seconds, you know, sketch comedy, you know, that kind of stuff. I did have an idea. I wrote a pilot in a show once, uh, just, again, for fun. It was, uh, I had just watched Slings and Arrows, um, which was a Shakespeare uh, theater troupe show in Canada. Um yeah. And I was really into theater. I'd produced a couple off Broadway shows, you know, and I uh -huh. got to know some theater troops and that kind of stuff. And so it was really in my mind. And the idea was that there was a theater troupe out in the middle of Iowa, right? Yeah. Um, and the city's claim to fame was when I when I came up with the city was that Ashton Kutcher played the set, the third guard from the left at this theater in some play, and so they called it the Ashton Kutcher Theater. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, oh, cool! And basically, like the they were improv and they did shows all the time. And except for like this one year, the the owner died, left it to like his daughter, and uh, they were getting new some new actors. And this quarterback who was like the big time college football star blew out his yeah. knee, and so he was back to reality, and he wanted to start acting and. And so they end up hiring him. And then the theater troupe is full of all your classic characters. Like there was this old guy. And uh, every time he would start talking, he would tell you, did I tell you about the time I was on off Broadway with uh, Sir Di Lou Diamond Phillips? And so yeah. like he was always just, everything was about Lou Diamond Phillips. And he always called him Sir Lou Diamond Phillips or something. Like <laughs> even though he's not knighted, it was just his way of like, every everything led to a story of him on Broadway with, Lou Diamond Phillips in every scene somehow. <laughs> wow. But like it was just because you know how it is. It's a, it was kind of a, a little bit like The Office and, you know, where it was kind of that 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 kind of style. But it, it just – when you think of how anybody who knows theater troops, they're just crazy. Yeah. There's just so much behind the scenes. Like the first off-Broadway show I saw – or first Broadway show I saw when I moved to New York was Noises Off with Jane Curtin. Okay. So, you know, a lot of that nice. left, you know, so it was fun. I wrote it. It was, it was fun. I never did anything with it, but anyways, cool. th enough about me. We're, we're here to talk with you. Yeah. So I got another, another one for, uh, for Maddie. Do you have a nickname Waldo? Yes, I do. Yeah. Somebody wants to know how you got that nickname Waldo. Oh, that's a great question. Um, so when I was uh, in high school, um, I would go to uh, concerts like Weezer, and I would dress up as Where's Waldo. <laughs> people would really get a kick out of it. Um, and I, it was really fun. I would just go to all different concerts as Waldo. Um, and just stand in the crowd? Yeah, when I actually moved to... It was funny, like, when I moved to Hollywood, when I moved to... I lived in Studio City, and I think one of the first things I did was I went on the Jay Leno show, and I sat in the audience as worst. <laughs> and I really thought, I was like, oh, man, they're going to interview me. This is going to be great. And no, they didn't interview me. They just thought it was, they probably thought I was a psycho or something. But yeah, I would they're go They're probably to on the camera going... 
they're probably on the radio going, hey, make sure the cameras don't pan to this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It reminds me of like... Yeah. How'd that guy get in here? <laughs> Who let him in? What you need to do is, for next Halloween, have your wife dress up like uh, Carmen Sandiego. Oh. So then you could have, like, wait, you found them both. There's got Carver San Diego and Waldo. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really fun. And I would, and, and I, I even, like, I had, a like, a business where I'd go to, like, reggae concerts because I was really into reggae music. And I had, I really, I really loved making grilled cheese sandwiches. And my, my take on it was I put pesto in them. And uh, they were pesto grilled cheeses, <laughs> and uh, I dressed up. As, I dressed up as Where's Waldo, and sold grilled cheeses out of like, you know, <laughs> out of festival, a music festival. <laughs> and it was called Waldo's Grill. And I bought like a grill at like Walmart or something. That's awesome. It was, yeah. That's yeah. great. I had no idea about that. that. Was so fun to learn. Yeah, I had no idea. Somebody just put. To ask how you got the nickname Waldo, so that's fun. Yeah. That'd be Who crazy. Knew? I I also had like an idea with a with a sketch comedy thing. Like if you ever, if I ever did a sitcom, you know, and you had like the neighbors, you'd just have one neighbor. Like every time they would you would meet them, they would be in a different uniform for like you know UPS one day, FedEx the next day, then like Subway, and then McDonald's. And then, <laughs> so I was like, then one day it could be like a Waldo at his grill, you know. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was very random. Such a like I don't think that business would ever <laughs> I don't think it would ever go like if I took that to Shark Tank, they'd probably laugh me out the door like what is wrong with this guy? What you should do is you know how you can set up like your little business uh when you search like Waldo's Grill on Google? It should just yeah. have one of those like area circles instead of actually telling you the location and it just should just say find us and it's somewhere in this circle and then yeah. the whole thing is to actually find where to get Waldo's you know grilled cheese oh yeah the whole business like a like a food business. truck thing but it's like we're just in this area come find us we're in this area today come find us <laughs> oh my good idea. you probably ago. would get like people like tagging you on Facebook like I found the truck today it's here <laughs> yeah totally that's hilarious. The, yeah, I should have done that. Uh, I might do that now, actually. It's a good idea. Yeah, you can start yeah. your whole your whole business like on the whole. It would take the whole uh, social media by storm because people would be tagging where they found you today. Right. Yeah, that's funny. I like that. Be good. Probably copyrighted. You probably can't do that, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not actually Waldo. It's Waldo's girl. You're fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're just There's another one. guy in a striped outfit with glasses. It's it's, yeah. an, it's not him. <laughs> I guess if I like made it, if maybe like brown instead of red, just there like in stripes. <laughs> so um, let me ask you this, because we do a lot of you know uh, with a lot of our listeners and a lot of people we we deal with uh, is in the whole found, fandom realm. So what was like your first celebrity experience? Like you were oh, just maybe a, like Ashuk or like oh you know or just you were just yeah. excited. Uh, my first celebrity I ever saw. Um, uh, actually, my my first celebrity I ever saw was I saw Larry Bird at the uh, the airport when I was like like nine years old, and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was so cool. Uh, we went, and my sisters went, and we went and asked for a photo with him, and it was, like, the first celebrity I ever, I'd ever seen. Um, and also, I think Jack Black, I saw him at a Weezer concert um, when I was dressed as worse, although I, I wonder <laughs> if you remember. Um, but, yeah, I saw him. Uh, that's another celebrity that I saw. That I was just like, whoa, that is crazy. Because I was from a small town, Exeter, New Hampshire. I didn't mm -hmm. see very many celebrities up close. And I think the first celebrity where I ever really kind of really got starstruck 
that I was like such a huge fan of was Larry David. I saw him eating at a restaurant. I just couldn't stop smiling because I felt like I was in the show, and I felt like he, <laughs> I felt like he was he was like having a conversation. I was like, oh, he's totally having like a a Larry David conversation, and it's probably hilarious. Um, it's funny you bring. Jim, up, oh, go ahead. Yeah, Jim Carrey uh, on Dumb and Dumber Two. When I met him, that was that was like. That was unreal because he was my hero, and um, yeah, that was very cool to meet him. He's um, all like very thought provoking and you know uh, deep now. Was he back then as well, or was he still like on his um, journey to get uh, self discovery at that time? I should say, or I feel like he he kind of. He's slowly been getting there for a long time and just getting deeper and deeper with it. Because, yeah, he's very self-aware for sure. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, this was back in 2012. So I don't know where he was at with all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I loved the Andy Kaufman documentary he made. That was very good. Oh, yeah. Um, I, love, I loved Man on the Moon and then the documentary about him and becoming just listening to the the stars from man on the moon that knew andy and said how crazy it was to just they they didn't see jim anymore like jim disappeared it yeah it's just such a cool thing yeah that was, was so good I, for some reason i just got a thought in my head you know of two people i'd like to see the show together sasha barra cohen and jim carrey <laughs> Like who could like create their own meta or their own method character better and go against each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see some more questions coming in. Yeah, I got I got one. Actually, you kind of segued into it. Um, I have one. Somebody said, "How was it growing up in New Hampshire?" Um. Uh, it was it was awesome. Um, uh, yes, so after, uh, who, who's asking these questions? I feel like this is like my wife asking these questions. Are you, are you talking no, about actually, actually, this is a guy named Martin, uh, from okay. our Facebook group. And he, oh, he listed a, a bunch of things he wanted to know about you. That's really cool. So wait, what's the, what's the question again? He wanted to know about how it was growing up in New Hampshire. He's also the one who knew about your Waldo nickname. So he may be a stalker. I'm not sure. No, 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 no. I see other questions. Oh, this is a, I think he's talking uh, about like Zach Light, about you hiking in yeah. uh, New Zealand before college. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I'm just wondering how they know about those. That's all. Oh, um, I don't know about Zach's question. And I'm your, going with Martin. your letter to Bill Clinton about uh, help to buy a dog. Yeah, when I was, I yeah, like I don't know how Zach knows that because I've only told like two or three people. Well, they're but also yeah, yeah. They also brought up the whole wheels of fortune like, thing as well. My mom or or like <laughs> mom is like posing as Zach or something. I don't know. Yeah, when I was when I was ten years old, I really wanted a dog, so I wrote to big Bill Clinton. Uh, asking if he would get me a dog and he they wrote back and they were like no you can't get a dog but you can go to the spca and get it get a dog and i was like oh okay. and i'm 10 years old I didn't, I didn't know anything about that so i was like oh okay that's cool so we went, we'd get a dog from the spca now, did they um, say you could only give it one name though yeah unfortunately <laughs> and what about hiking through uh the islands and of New Zealand. Oh wait, let me tell a story about writing. I wrote Adam Sandler a, a, a letter when I first moved to LA because I was like, "Oh, Adam Sandler, uh, um, uh, we're like, you know, he's from New Hampshire. I'm from New Hampshire. He'll help me out in Hollywood." And I was making a short film in film school, and it was about a shoe shiner that talked to a goldfish. <laughs> Was, I wrote to Adam Sandler and I asked him if he would, if he would be the voice of the goldfish, 
And um, his assistant like wrote back like, no, he can't, but he wishes you luck in your career and, you know, all this stuff. And I thought that was very nice. And I've been such a huge um, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley fan. And then years later, maybe like a year, year and a half ago, I actually saw the first time that Sandler came back to SNL. And I was, uh, I was on stage because my friend Melissa is a cast member. And um, I got to see him perform like backstage. And that was unreal. That was really cool. And I got to meet him a couple times and his daughters actually knew who I was and I just thought that was really cool and um and I I, I don't did you guys see that episode he like sang a song yeah. about Chris Farley yeah. and it was very moving and I just told him how much that meant to me and uh it was just so wild to to actually be a kid and end up there and you know, I'm a small town kid from New Hampshire and I'm like, you know, in the mix with these people. It's just such a cool experience. Like anything can happen. Your dreams can come true is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, when I watched the Wheels of Fortune last night, you know, I was watching it. I was like, this is good. But it's like, I'm like, it, it could be, it's like this almost like a, a little bit more time. And it could have been like Tommy Boy, I was thinking. Like it could have been, you know, like like that. I got that kind of like, Tommy Boy feel, like that kind of feeling. You know, the road trip. Oh, the, yeah. and it just, but it sure. just wasn't there. It was like, it was like here. It was like there. So it's good, but it just needed a little bit more to get to that level, you know. But I, but I, yeah. it gave me that Tommy Boy feeling in a sense when I was watching it. Yeah. You, uh, Maddie, I got to say, you're bringing out – the, the questions now, um, I don't know if you're seeing this. There's one in there about your experience studying dolphins. And then yeah. there's another about you almost dying in Yellowstone National Park. <laughs> yes. I, these are all great stories. And I, I, I wonder who's, who's, who is this stack person? Well, they said they're, uh, they're, they can look into your... Uh, your window, and they said, clean your room. Just joking. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, they go by Zach Height. Zach, Zach Height? Yeah. All right. I like these qu All right. What other questions does Zach have? They're very... Well, that Zach haven't had the one about the New, the New Zealand hitchhiking and then di almost oh. dying in Yellowstone. Right, yeah. I, I backpacked New Zealand um right out of high school um and i also went to hawaii and i studied dolphins um and i thought it would be more scientific and stuff but they they wanted us like to clean the do the dolphin's poop out of its tank and <laughs> <laughs> i was very stuck up and i was like no i'm not doing that I came here to learn about dolphins, not clean up. <laughs> I feel like it was some kind of scam where they got like interns to come out and do all the dirty work for them. Um, but maybe you know, I don't know. So I I I left. I was there for like a week, <laughs> and I left. Um, but it was a fun trip. Uh. I've done a lot of things like that. Like I went to, um, I went to cooking school. Uh, I really wanted to open a restaurant, you know, Waldo's Grill. I don't know if it would have been Waldo's Grill, but I really wanted to open up a restaurant. So I, I went to chef school, and they really wanted like the first couple days I was there. They're like, oh, you gotta, you gotta like iron your shirt and. Um, wear fancy shoes and wear a hairnet and i was like no thanks i was like i'm not doing that and i called my mom mom i want to come home i think we're similar in the fact that to me life is all about experiences you know and i went through quite a bit like uh when i moved out from oregon to new york uh 
I kept, this was at a time when you could donate to charities and you'd get cool like stuff, like auctions and stuff. Now they blow up to like, you need to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to win them. And, but I, I did a lot of cool things. Like I got to be in the season finale of Raising Hope, you know, and I got to walk the red carpet of the People's Choice Awards. You know, I got just a lot of cool experiences that I got to do. And the same thing that was like why I did uh, UCB for, you know, the classes was not because I wanted to become an actor or something. It was just because I thought it'd be something cool to try for, you know, a couple months. Right, right. Wow, that's cool. So Zach has to be, I don't know, Zach just is either your number one fan or yeah. is writing your biography. My mom. <laughs> Or my wife. Um, <laughs> so what's the what's the Yellowstone this Yellowstone story about almost losing your life and then being evacuated on a mule that was almost struck by lightning? <laughs> oh yes, yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, I went on this like uh, trip for um, it was called like. Uh, national outdoor leadership school it's called like Knowles, where you go out and like basically uh go out in the wilderness and fish and camp and you know learn about the wilderness and uh yeah i was out there for two weeks and i started like getting really like i couldn't ever you know you had, you had to carry like 100 pounds on your back and i was like 17 probably weighed like 120 pounds and uh just like halfway through the trip like i kept i kept being like oh guys i need to take a break <laughs> <laughs> and i was like guys i need a break and then we walk a little bit longer and be like all right when's break time and uh I I started like not to be graphic, but started like shitting blood. Like I was like, oh, oh something's not. Good. <laughs> and, uh, I told the and by the way, we were in the wilderness, so I had to like dig a hole. Uh, and there's we couldn't use toilet paper, so we had to use smooth rocks. And we had to. <laughs> While we're hiking, we're all like <laughs> looking for rocks that are smooth to be like, all right, yeah, I think that's a good rock. I think that no, that's not that's not very smooth. That doesn't look very smooth. That might cut you up. But yeah, uh, <laughs> we have to find smooth rocks. Uh, so you may be the one person that actually would know how to use the three seashells from Demolition Man, is what you're saying. Yes, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, so. Uh, so yeah, it turned out that I had, they didn't know what was wrong with me, but I was evacuated on a, they didn't have cell reception, by the way. So they had to <laughs> climb a literal mountain to get up to be like, all right, we gotta, we gotta get this kid out of there. And I, uh, honestly, I, I don't think they got cell reception because if they did, they would have been able to get a helicopter. Yeah. But they, so I had to be evacuated on a mule and it took 10 hours straight on a mule uh, that was very slow. And I had to, like, cross, like, rivers and shit. Oh, uh, can I swear <laughs> on here? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I had, like, rivers um, on this mule, like, in city slickers. Like, it was, it was crazy. It was really wild, really. You know, so being in... Being in Northern California and in Oregon, you know, we have the Pacific Crest yeah. Trail that people people love to do this life-changing experience of doing the Pacific Crest Trail. And I've had many a friend that post their, like, day one and then post their end of the trail and they just look, like, emaciated and tired. And they're like, I did it. And I was like, I've stayed home and I'm doing great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like good for you. But so, yeah. Turned out that I had a bleeding ulcer, not just a regular ulcer, but a bleeding one from the stress of hiking. So, oh, yeah. so I'm not a big fan of hiking. You asked me to go hiking. <laughs> so, you know. 
Which, uh, um, but that story brings me up to our my next Shark Tank pitch. Uh oh. Smooth river rocks oh. in case of toilet uh, paper uh, shortages. It's like, yeah. W- w- why do you have a whole <laughs> box of sea uh, of uh, river rocks next to your toilet? Oh yeah, it's just in case uh, we run out of toilet paper. It's, 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 it's the times. It's the need. Yeah. And, uh, I kind of feel bad for the mule. I had to go <laughs> 10 hours. Yeah, what's the lightning, by the way? Like, did lightning almost hit the mule? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we were so high up in the mountains that uh, it was very electric. And my hair started to rise up because <laughs> there was lightning, literal lightning. And... Um, it was crazy. At one point, yeah, there was like my my mule was bucking because there was a grizzly bear close by, and it was like I think you've man, got your I, next movie script right here. Yeah, like this is you need to write a movie about this. I should, I should. It was it was it it was amazing, but also it really kind of sucked. Have um, you been back to Yellowstone since? No. <laughs> and if I think I do, I think I'll take a, a mule with me the whole time, or a horse. <laughs> Kendall, uh, Kendall is not a fan of nature. Kendall's not a fan of nature. She, uh, her, her theory is we've evolved to build structures to to <laughs> to, to have shelter. Why are if you? If we wanted it like that, we'd still be living outside. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not. All right, I, I've. Very- I've come up with the, the next Shark Tank idea. So oh, after you use your rock, you know those. You ever seen the golf ball cleaning machines? You put the <laughs> golf ball in, and then you. So it's you put the rock. In. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Wash your rock off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, I warned you when we started this show that we just go, we just talk, and, no, just, and then this whole time, by the way, Zach has now gone back to high school. Where you were voted most unique. <laughs> Must be my mom. I mean, I can't. Or, yeah, I don't know. Is this or, all on Wikipedia or something? Um, or it's, yeah, like a, my biggest fan. It Zach, might be. Zach, if you're not my mom or my wife and you're my biggest fan, thank you. Thank you, but <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Uh, we we planted Zach to to to, to ask the <laughs> questions we couldn't ask. Yeah, Zach's the plan. yeah, Zach. Yeah, Zach is like uh, Nardwar. Do you guys <laughs> know who Nardwar is? Yeah, he's like one of the best interviewers. He'll find out like in, information that they'll be like, "How did you know that?" The guy who who interviews rappers, right, in Canada? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do 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 Nardwar. <laughs> Speaking of music, right? What was your first? I was I don't know who I was talking with this the other day, but like, what was your first music experience? Like your first maybe, you know, CD tape, whatever that you bought or got or. Uh, my sister really got me into Led Zeppelin. I remember I heard, uh, I think that song "Cashmere" was the song that really got me into music. I was just like, whoa, what is this? And also, like, Bob Dylan. I went and saw Bob Dylan play in New Hampshire. Um, that was really cool. I saw his yeah, son I play. That's when I was a kid. I, uh, I, I saw, what was it, uh, when he, uh, the Wallflowers, right? It was his son, Jacob Dylan? Uh, yeah, 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 Jacob Dylan. It's a Dylan. One Headlight song or something? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I worked at this place called Fry's, uh, Art Incredible Universe in Oregon, and Art Alexander f- from Everclear worked there uh, in the music department and then before he started Everclear. And then I got to see them perform at, uh, in Portland, and they actually brought him on stage and did the whole cover of that song with uh, Jacob Dylan and stuff like that. Oh, wow. But, uh, but that's cool. Um I was more, I, I started more in the rap area and like where I was talking to, I think somebody the other day were like, 
when I first heard Queen, you know, it was through because of Vanilla Ice, <laughs> you know, or the first time I heard <laughs> Cashmere was because of Puff Daddy, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah. But then led me to all these other. I think we talk about this all the time, uh, Michael, about reaction videos. Oh, yeah. Like, they're really big on YouTube right now. So I like going back and watching people react to, like, Queen, react to, like, somebody was even reacting to MC Hammer, and it made, it made me feel super old. It's like, how do you not know who <laughs> MC Hammer is? Right? Like, I'm going to listen to this guy. His name is Mick Hammer. Okay. Mick Hammer, <laughs> let's see what you can do. Mick Hammer. But, yeah. But uh, we got a twist here. Michael. Zach says you talk to him a lot and you've even done a trade with him. I know. Zach is in the community, which is I was I thought it was funny the whole he's my mom. Zach is just apparently your big fan. Wow, thank you, Zach. Appreciate that, Zach. Well, we should send Zach a, a photo. I've got I got some, so yeah. let's send one to Zach. All right. You guys can write to him and I'll, Send one to Zach. Uh, we'll get you an autograph photo. Or does Zach already have one, probably? I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that, if Zach subscribes to, to the same stuff we do, we got we got Maddie's. Um, but it's still awesome to see. So we got uh, our other good friend, Where is Marty, wants to know if you uh, could play a superhero, what superhero do you want to play? Like, is there one that you would create or a mainstream one? Oh, that's a good question. Um, superhero. Basically, we're watching Mystery Men. And you're auditioning for a role on the, uh, on the, cat, oh, no. on the squad. <laughs> Who do you show up as? That's a great question. Um, uh, oh, God, that's so good. Well, let me hear yours first, because then that'll help me figure out mine. Um... Marco, uh, Marco. Oh, me? Okay, let's see. He's, he's flipping yeah. and putting, you, putting us on the spot. Um, let's see. I guess improv man. Be able to sit there. And, <laughs> for any situation, be able to turn into any character instantly. And react That's with the good. perfect answer to every single. And then. <laughs> okay, I picked improv man. I would have <laughs> picked that too. <laughs> I was <laughs> like... Uh, Improv men. Improv men. Yeah. The other show Marco and I were doing, we were uh, kind of doing our own personal reactions to uh, trailers. I don't know if you've seen the the new Suicide Squad trailer, but you've got Nathan Fillion's going to play the arms falls off boy. <laughs> like uh, his power, his body parts fall off. <laughs> that's funny. I just, that, that kind of stuff is going to, is, you know, it's just a crack up. Like, what is that going to do? <laughs> that's funny. But, uh, all right. Well, I think that's all the time we got for today, guys. So that was awesome. Uh, yeah. Thank you. It was, it's been a pleasure. We hope to, we can have you on again. And, oh, I know. I thought of a superhero, uh, person, the ooh. smooth rock man. Smooth rock man. <laughs> Don't smooth take rock. shit from no one. Yeah, it was shit on him. You don't know. You could have been one lightning strike away from being a superhero. You could have become like Mule That's Boy. True. It was happening. Your hair was. It was your yeah, little origin happening. story. You were powering up. Or like, yeah, Grizzly Boy or something. You could have been Ulster Mule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and you could have been like uh, with your <laughs> your your special your special powers Mule Kick. Yeah, that's funny. We can Hello. end. Well, we we can end it with a note from your from apparently one of your biggest fans, Zach, that said, "Last fun fact is you are an avid painter and had your own solo exhibit in L.A." Yes, that's true. Did you do the painting to your behind you? Is that yours? Yeah, this is one of my paintings for sure. It's a giraffe. That's awesome. Yeah, you see it. Yeah, it's a giraffe. Plants. Oh, and Kendall sees your plant. She's a Kendall is a huge house plant person. Are you a plant person? I love plants. Yeah, plants and cats. The best hobby: house plants. House yeah. plants and house cats. It's like nature, but in your house. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> like like the pets. Or like nature man. My, nature man. <laughs> nature man. <laughs> or painter man, like someone that paints. I don't know. Paints nature. Paints like a hole and disappears. The only thing you could you can paint is nature landscapes. You're Bob Ross reincarnated. Yeah. Bob, Bob Ross superhero. <laughs> or no, like you got hit by lightning on a mule and now you can only paint uh, Yellowstone landscapes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> and cats. And cats. There, and there's cats. a hidden cat in every single painting, and your cat's name is Waldo. Yeah. <laughs> Do we get to say bye to Hunter, or is he gone? Oh, yeah, he's still here. He's just been laying here the whole time. Bye, Hunter. <laughs> bye. Thank bye, you. Bye, Hunter. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's been Ken. a pleasure. You too. Right. That was fun. Thanks, guys. We hope you've enjoyed your journey to the kingdom of Ralph. And remember, listeners, travel safe. This episode of Kingdom of Graph is sponsored by the Autograph of the Month Club, where for just $20 a month, you can get a signed 8x10 photo in the mail. Please visit them at www.autographofthemonth.com. Use promo code KINGDOM to get a bonus welcome autograph with your first subscription 